Hello, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to this series on my solar journey. And we're now into April, so we're already a third of the way through the year. And it's time to look back at my solar generation and money savings in March and see how that compares to uh, previous months and if I'm still on target um, from my prediction back in uh, early January, which from last month's video, you know, has gone a little bit aw awry, so we can see if we're back on target. So, as usual, um, please hit the subscribe button, it really helps build um, my subscriber base, obviously, and that will allow me to do more stuff with my channel, so if you can, take a second, just go down below the video, click the subscribe button, and then you're done, and then come back to watching, or you can do it as you're watching. So, I'm going to go straight into the numbers. As you can see from the title, March hasn't been a particularly good month. Um, I think it's pretty much rained every single day here in Swansea. There might be one day where it didn't rain, but if you've seen the BBC forecast recently, um, you'd have seen that in March, I think in some places in the UK, we've had three times as much rainfall as was expected or compares to previous Marches. So that has had an impact on the solar generation. So just to remind you what um, I've got and where these numbers are coming from. On my roof I have 12 Q cell 385 kilowatt panels which uh, total 4.68 uh, uh, kilowatts in total um, and that's feeding down into a 5 kilowatt solid inverter which goes into feeding the house and also charging a 5 kilowatt hour pure drive uh, battery. And the money savings I'm taking is from the amount of uh, electricity that we use um, and therefore con uh, converting that into a pounds value um, using the rate that I paid for my British back gas, which um, I fixed a couple of years ago before the energy crisis, just as the energy crisis was starting to kick off, which is I'm fixed on till March 2024, and that pays 19p per kilowatt hour. I'm not taking into account standing charge because I can't do anything about that with my solar panels. Um, and I've also got a seg payment coming from So Energy, which pays 5 uh, P per kilowatt hour for every kilowatt hour um, sent back to the grid. So those are basically where I'm generating my numbers from and um, I'm reading my numbers from my smart meter and also the Solis app. So let's get straight into these numbers then. So as you can see from this graph, this is my March generation. Uh, my total generation in March was 292 kilowatt hours. And as you can see from the graph, um, I've had, there was one day that was um, stands out more than the others, um, where we produced over 27 kilowatt hours. That's a record, that's since I had the system installed last August, that's the most that uh, we've ever generated in a day. But as you can see straight after that, we had two really bad days. And these days were actually pretty prevalent throughout the whole of March, where we only generated 1.1 kilowatt hours. Um, our average daily usage is between the 6 and 7 kilowatt hour mark. One thing we have can see from this uh, graph is that even though it's been cloudy, we've still been getting around the 5 kilowatt hour mark, even on the very cloudy days. Um, and quite often we've been up at around the uh, 10 to 15 kilowatt hour mark um, and that's just a mixture of having longer days and the sun being slightly higher in the sky and then the clouds being slightly heavy we haven't had the really really dark cloud where we get no generation at all so we have had a trickle of generation each day or for each minute of each day which over the time does or over the time of daylight does actually accumulate up so 292 generated this year and now we go on to this graph which just show oh sorry this month and now we go on to this graph, which shows how the electricity was used. So in um, this graph, the red is money is the import. So this month we had to import a total of 31 kilowatt hours. So that's in red. And as you can see, it's on most days, but most days is also fairly low. Um, in yellow, you can see the battery discharge, so this energy that we've charged our battery with and then discharged, so saved for later. Um, and most days we're still really relying on that. 
The green is what's called self-use, so this is real-time use, so this energy being generated on the roof and going straight into application use. And on some days we've actually had quite a bit of this. Um, and finally, the blue is the export. So these are all the days where we've exported back to the grid. So as you can see, there's a fair number of days where we have exported, but there hasn't been many days where we export, exported a huge amount. Most time it's only between three and four kilowatt hours. So the question is, how does this convert into um, money and usage? So this graph shows the um, uh, to our year to date, so the January, February and March data. So the blue is energy that we have generated ourselves and we've used either from charging the battery and then using it after or real time on the roof. So in this month we've used 557.2 kilowatts, I like that, and there's that 31 that we've imported from the grid. So you can see that this totals just under 190 kilowatt hours for this month, which is actually well below our average. Normally we um, use um, about 200 kilowatt hours in a month. If you can look in February, it's actually a very similar number to what we use in February. It's actually a little bit less, but in February there are three less days. And the reasons for this is because we had so much cloud and so little generation, we were making some real lifestyle changes. So um, we were delaying putting the uh, dishwasher on for two days rather than putting it on every other day, which we'd normally do. Um, we were um, using the hob um, to, uh, and making things like stir fries on the day um, when we didn't have much power electricity generation because that runs off the gas um, instead of using the other which we may have used. So that's where that actually comes from for our savings. So we can now convert this into uh, money terms. So the money we've saved, so this is money that we would have spent sent to British Gas, but in self, instead have um, saved, so this is that 19p per kilowatt hour, so that totals 35, uh, no it doesn't, it, start, it um, totals £30.79 and 79 pence for this month. The SEG payments, so this is money we've ex exported back to the grid, which was 131 kilowatt hours for this month. That um, at 5p turns into £6.58. Uh, so that's a total savings to us, or total money in, whichever way you want to look at that, of £37.36. And, and the money on import, so converting that money that we've, that 31 kilowatt hours we've imported, that converts to £6.05. And and so throughout the March, we have only spent £6.05 and and on electricity plus then our standing charge. So that is reasonably good because when we look at it in percentage terms, so what our reliance was on the grid, our reliance in March was on the grid was 16.42%, which was actually lower than February, which was 16.88%. And that was a lot lower than January at 34.10%. Uh, so that overall is quite good. It's actually below um, the average uses or average sufficiency we've had since having the solar panels. So on the, that side of fins, fins are very, very good. So the question is, why did I put that title to the video that fins weren't quite as uh, we hoped? So for this, we need to go uh, compare to previous months. So if I just compare to uh, February, which should have been a worse month, our Sufficiency percentage is roughly the same, so that's though it's not a bad thing, it's not good either. Um, we did spend a little bit less on import, we spent 40p less again, which is good, but we only generated um, 20 kilowatt hours more. And that can bear in mind this is a longer month and we have those longer daylight hours, that really does have the problems. And because we had to change our lifestyle quite more, uh, a lot more our total savings was actually a bit less in March than it was in February. So as I say, in March we saved uh, £30.79 and that was £31.58 in February. Uh, we did have a little bit more seg which causes a little bit of that offset. So, And our overall total savings for the month, so that's seg plus the savings, um, we're actually 10p down on February. So that's one of the reasons why I don't think March was a particularly good month. 
The other reason is that um, in that January video where I made my predictions for the year, um, for that prediction I used my October data um, to basically generate my March data. As I said that they, on terms of the year, they would be similar. It, and if you look at the February data, it's actually we were a little bit uh, ahead of that. But if I compare now with this uh, table, what um, our March numbers were compared to October last year, as you can see, we were over 55 kilowatt hours down on generation. Our usage was 20 kilowatt hours down, so that just shows you how much of a lifetime change we had. We were 10% different. Uh, import, um, we had a little bit less import in um, October compared to uh, this month, um, and that therefore generates a different or turns into a saving on import in October um, of about 70p compared to this month or 78p. So in October we only spent £5.27 on import and that compares to £6.05 p this month. Uh, export, <coughs> obviously because we generated uh, a lot more in October, we sent an extra 40 kilowatt hours to the grid and then that for, for, therefore affects the seg payment. But the big difference is, is the total saved. Um, it's over £6. So if you multiply that up by a 12 month period, if this was the sort of numbers we were out by each time, um, 6 times 12 is £72 a year. It's quite a significant amount of difference. So that's just something that um, shows just how bad this March was for our solar generation. Overall though, we've still made uh, close to £40 of savings and income from the SAG. So that is not necessarily a bad thing. Hopefully April will be better. Anyway, um, as I say, if you've enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button. The, um, obviously, this is going out on April the 2nd because I filmed it on April the 1st. On April the 1st, if you looked at the uh, local newspapers or local news channels or any news channel, you'll know that today is the day that uh, energy support from the government has uh, dropped off. So people are no longer getting that £67 per month payment even though the price cap has come down slightly, um, or stayed the same actually, um, it's still a problem for people. Uh, there's still an energy crisis going on. There's still very high rates of electricity being paid. So hopefully you found this useful if you're considering solar panels yourself. Anyway, I'll see you in another video very soon.